we are going to go ahead and get started with Gina B. Jones in our read aloud. So I'm actually going to turn to my Gina B. Jones page in my notebook so I can do a little review of what I've read. Because if you're reading a chapter book and you don't finish a chapter book, you may want to kind of review before you start reading it. So it says, my characters are Gina B. Jones. They are Grace, Lucille, Richie, Nana, Mom, Dad, and Gina B. Jones' brother, Ollie. And then the setting so far is the bus outside, Nana's car, Junie B's house, and then Junie B wants to go to the Richie Nana's house, but Lucille does not want her there. But we know that she does end up getting invited by Lucille. And um, that then we also said that we don't think Junie B is going to follow the sweep of her rules because she doesn't follow the rules normally anyways, right? We are like, well, on a regular basis, she doesn't follow the rules, so why is she not going to follow these sleepover rules? All right, so this is chapter four, packing my bags. The next morning was Saturday. I jumped out of bed and run to the kitchen. Then I got a big, giant plastic bag, and I run back to my room to pack for Lucille's. First, I packed my favorite pillow, then I packed my pajamas and my bathrobe and my slippers that looked like bunnies. Also, I packed my blanket and my sheets and a small, attractive throw rug. Finally, I packed my sub-elephant named Philip Johnny Bob. He looked up at me from inside the bag. Yeah, only here's the problem, he said. You're not actually supposed to put me in a plastic bag because I could suffocate in this thing. My eyes got big and wide. Oh, no, I said, real upset. I forgot about that. That's how come I quickly got my scissors and cut air holes for that guy. Philip Johnny Bob sniffed the air. Better, he said. I petted his trunk. Then I went into the family room and I watched cartoons till Mother got up. Pretty soon, I heard her slippers in the hall. Mother, Mother! I'm all ready, I said. I'm ready to go to Lucille's. I pulled Mother into my room and showed her my plastic bag. Mother looked at her, shook her head. Way too much stuff, she said. Then she got a teeny suitcase from the shelf, and she packed my pajamas and my slippers and my robe and my toothbrush. After that, she got a sleeping bag from her closet, and she put my pillow on top of that. There, that's all you need. You're all set. She said, I sprang into the air. All set? I hollered real joyful. Junie B. Jones is all set for Lucille's. After that, I quickly grabbed Philip Johnny Bob and I dragged my stuff to the front door. All righty, let's be on our way, I shouted, very excited. Mother was in baby Ollie's room. She didn't come. Okie dokie, I'm going outside now. Junie B. Jones is going outside to get in the car. I shouted louder. Just then, Mother ran to get me. No, Junie B. No, I'm not taking you to Lucille's, remember? Lucille's Nana is picking you up at 3 o'clock. I told you that. I'm sure I did. All of a sudden, my shoulders got very slumpy because I didn't actually remember that information, that's why. Darn it, I said, very sad. Three o'clock takes forever. After that, I slumped to the table and ate my breakfast. Then I sat on my front step, and I swinged on my swings, and I read some books, and I ate a cheese sandwich, and I counted to a million bazillion, and I sat on my steps some more, and then guess what? Three o'clock finally came. I saw the big gold car in my driveway. Hey, she's here, she's here, she's here, I yelled, real thrilled. Mother and Daddy hurried to the door. Are you ready to go, said Mother. Ready, I yelled. Junie B. Jones is ready to go. The Richie Nana got out of her car. I throwed my arms around her. Hello, Nana, hello, hello. I have been waiting for you the whole live long day. Mother pulled me off that woman. Sorry, she said. 
I'm afraid Jeannie B has a little extra energy in her. She's been sitting on that step for hours. I leaped way high in the air. Sitting on the step, I said. Jeannie B. Jones has been sitting on the step. Daddy and Mother carried my things to the big gold cattle act. And guess what? When they opened the door, Lucille and that Grace were already in the back seat. Lucille, Grace, I didn't even know you were already there. And so this is a delightful surprise. I reached inside to try to tickle them, but Mother pulled my hand away. Please, Shuni P, don't start, she said. I saluted her. Aye, aye, Captain, I said real hilarious. After that, I got in the car, and I bounced on the softy seat. Only too bad for me, because I accidentally bounced too about high and banged my head on the roof. The Nana did a gasp. I patted her. Yeah, only that didn't even faze me, I said. After that, I buckled up my seatbelt and waved goodbye to Mother and Daddy, and the Nana drove us away. So, I want us to think about, because I love the part where, uh, when Junie B, right, when Junie B says that she bumps her head, right, on the thing, uh, Nana gasped, right? So, she probably is very surprised when that happens or very shocked, but then Junie B is kind of like, whatever right so what kind of like what kind of character trait could we give Junie B she's very can anybody help me out what kind of character trait could I give Junie B Emily what kind of character trait could I give Junie B I forgot what I was gonna say anybody else what kind of character trait could I give Junie B I mean, what kind of character trait could I give her? Camila? I said excited. Oh, yeah, she is very excited. That's very true. What other character trait could I give her? I can't hear you. She's very energetic. She is very energetic. That is very true. Very energetic. Bella, do you have a different one? Hyper. Hyper, very hyper. So she's excited, she's hyper, she's energetic. What else, Emily? Not self-conscious. Mm, okay, I like that. So she's not very self-aware, right? She's not really self-aware about like what's going on around her, especially like when she hit her head and stuff and the fact that that might shock Nana, obviously but it doesn't shock. It didn't phase Judy B at all. She was like, oh, well, I hit my head, whatever. You know, um, I was also thinking of the word carefree. We could give Judy B Jones the word carefree. So I actually kind of want to write a few of these in my journal. So I'm kind of going to put, I'm going to put Judy B. So we said hyper, Enter energetic, um, excited. Uh, I said carefree. Emily said not self aware, so she doesn't really know what's going on. Um, so these are just some different character traits, right, that I can give Junie B. So these are just some different character traits that I might give her. And the reason that it's important, especially when you're reading chapter books, is to, or the reason it's important to identify character traits while you're reading chapter books is because your main character, like Junie B, is never going to change. She's always going to be your character and she's always going to stay the same. So it's kind of important that you go ahead and identify who she is and how she acts. So then you are able to say, oh yeah, she's acting this way, this way, and this way. And it doesn't change throughout the book. It stays the same. All right. So that is.